Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. This is the Becker BK2 from K-Bar. It's made in the United States. Whether you call it a camp knife or a survival knife, people define those things differently for themselves. But I think most people agree that for $70 from Amazon, the BK2 provides a lot of value in an outdoor knife. It's not a $300 custom knife, but it does give you a good basis to make an even better knife. I'm going to show you some of the things that it, it does out of the box as well as talk about some of the things that you might do to make it even better for yourself. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The BK2 is 10 and a half inches of 1095 Crow Van steel. It's got a flat grind with a secondary bevel at 20 degrees. The blade is powder coated to protect against rust, though this powder coating does get in the way of using the spine to strike a ferro rod. Many people actually use a gel stripper to take the powder coating off altogether. Probably the most impressive thing about the BK2 is that it is a full one quarter inch thick all the way to the pommel. This is designed to take abuse. The factory edge is pretty rough. So I'm cutting through this paper, I'm actually having to saw through it with the blade. You can hear it actually tear through the fibers. It's cutting, but I can't just push cut through it. And there's a reason for this. This has a utility only edge from the factory. You can see right here, all the serrations on the blade itself just from the grinding process. It's not polished. And those little serrations are actually very good at cutting fibers like the collagen fibers in this tan deer hide. I got it caught on the back edge of the blade there, but I'm basically just pushing it right through that hide. It's also pretty good at biting into fibers like in wood. And of course, you're not gonna get a quarter inch thick blade if you're not planting the processed wood with it. It just makes no sense to carry around a one pound knife if this isn't the kind of activity that you might find yourself doing. Though it looks like I'm not getting a lot with each swing, I'm actually letting the knife do the work. I'm holding it loosely in my hand and letting its one pound weight bite into the wood on its own. So I don't swing as hard, it just means I've got to swing more times. And like a beaver chewing away on a piece of wood, it eventually gets through quite well. A quarter inch blade just invites you to baton the back of it. And it makes quick work of the log that I just cut from that tree. Even that big flat pommel comes in handy when you're batoning. If the knife gets a little crooked, just give a few big whacks on that and you're back in business with a straight knife to finish up your batoning. Though a big one pound knife isn't gonna be your favorite thing to make a feather stick, the K-Bar BK2 is up to the task. This edge has seen three full chops through that log and this is actually the third feather stick I've made. It did start to get dull at the edge here. I could see that I had to push a little bit harder to get those shavings off, but I made a nice little feather stick nonetheless. At this point, I've made three complete chops through that tree. I've batoned that log into eight different pieces and I've made three fuzz sticks. And this edge is showing it. I'm having a real hard time getting this even started without tearing the paper. That needs some work. But here's the test of the steel of the BK2. This is my belt that I got from the belt man. I'm going to actually put a link in the video description because I'm such a fan of his work. And I just took this belt off, flipped it around to the back side, and I'm giving it nine pairs of strokes to strop the edge. This is the only thing that I've done to the edge at all since taking it out of the box. You're looking at it right here. And wait till you see the difference that this dropping makes. That edge is still there that the factory put on it. I just had to bring it back 
with a little bit of polishing on that leather. Watch this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. What a neat little trick. The most common complaint you see about the BK2 is the sheath. I think earlier versions had retention problems, but they certainly have it fixed now. There's no way this knife is coming out unless you actually put thumb pressure to help split the two halves of the sheath apart. I'm not sure whether they fixed it or not. I haven't used it enough to know, but other people have found that the sheath dulls the knife because as they pull it out, it hits the bottom of the sheath and being glass filled nylon, it actually works kind of like a stone taking the edge off. Of course, the way that you, you deal with that is as you draw, you just put a little upward pressure so that you keep the blade off of the bottom of the scabbard and you don't have to worry about that. But you can buy aftermarket sheaths, you can make your own for it, and then you don't have to worry about that. But other than that, I personally don't have any problems with this sheath. There are countless modifications that you can make to the BK2. And the nice thing is, it's a $70 knife, so you should feel comfortable doing it. At least more comfortable than you'd feel doing it to a $300 knife, which hopefully you wouldn't need to modify in the first place. But I'm going to put a better edge on it. Some people put a whole new grind on theirs. I might be doing some texturing on the handle because I find the grivery pretty slippery once my hands get sweaty. But other than that, for my purposes, this knife is good to go. I think it's pretty clear why this is probably the most reviewed knife on YouTube. It is a pretty good value. For $70, you do get a lot. But it also gives you the opportunity to get better at doing things with a knife that everybody should be good at, like getting a really good edge on a piece of steel. Maybe even modifying the handle or, or learning how to make your own handle. For $70, you don't end up with a knife that you're afraid to use. You end up with a knife that you can use and you don't have to worry about it breaking. If you want to learn more about the Becker BK2, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. It'll really help me out. Be sure to click up here to subscribe to catch my other videos on bows, guns, and other cool things like this Becker BK2. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.